Hello, everyone. Welcome back to GAME News. I'm Kurt Weigel. Today, we have to report 140 dice pileup on the Exalted Highways as three Solar Exalted were trying to decide who was more badass. A wizard died from analysis paralysis in the Hero Game subdivision of Our Fine City. And finally, teen sleuths tackle more mysteries and cases in Bel Air's Falls, filming about 30 seconds. Hey folks, welcome back to Game Geeks. I'm Kurt Weigel. Today we are going to be talking about Bubblegum Shoe, seen right here. This clever little book by Evil Hat Games is a very pared down version of the gumshoe system. Wait, what did you say? They pared it down with Fear Itself? That was a pretty pared down version of the gumshoe system as well, but this is even more pared down. Ladies and gentlemen, this book is written expressly for playing teenage investigators. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, this is your chance to play Nancy Drew, or one of the Hardy Boys, I can never remember their names, or Encyclopedia Brown, if you will, depending on your era. This is specifically designed to play those sorts of characters. So, as with all gumshoe-based games, what you've got going on here is you've got a character that is based on a series of abilities. There are no attributes here. And these abilities are divided into three sections, investigative, interpersonal, and general. Now with investigative and interpersonal, you get a certain number based on how many people are in your group. The fewer the people, the more points you get. Mainly because the basic idea of gumshoe is you should never be wanting for clues to solve the mystery. We've discussed this in previous reviews, including Trail of Cthulhu and Night's Black Agents. So, investigative abilities include things like fashion, pop culture, town lore, interpersonal, BS detector, taunt, intimidation. General abilities are kind of what your character should be able to do anyway. Athletics, fighting, repair, etc. You always get 40 points in those. You get four points of cool for free. Now, you can use cool for pretty much your moxie stat or your ability to go and do something. There are also relationships that you develop in this game. They're actually pre-written in there. And they are people, kind of what they are, what they do in your life, and you either love them, you like them, or you hate them. And that is ranked numerically. The higher the number, the bigger influence they have on your life. Further description of your character includes class, upper class, working stiff, wrong side of the tracks, middle class, you know, etc. like that. Cliques, jocks, nerds, stoners, I feel like I'm listing off the sort of people who liked Ferris Bueller. He's a righteous dude. And finally, clubs. Chess club, gaming club, stuff like that. That can further add to your character's description and sources that they can, and sources that they can rely on for more help or information. This gives you a sample town and advice to building your own town built around the characters themselves. There are certain zones in there that are like common areas, your school, most areas of town. Those are common areas. Those cost zero cool to go there. There's adult specific areas, work for your folks. That costs one cool. And finally, it costs more cool to go to a dangerous place. The haunted house up on Crestmore. Now, actually like a known drug area, gang territory, that sort of thing. This is very definitely written for younger players to play, or an adult with a group of younger players, or a one-shot if you really feel like going back to high school. My children have been watching Riverdale re recently, which is the sort of gritty TV version of Archie Comics, and I gotta tell you folks, if there was ever a property that did not need a gritty reboot, it was Archie Comics. But they enjoy it, and this very much has that feel to it. It's an investigative game, solve mysteries, get home in time to study for the algebra class. I'm Kurt Weigel. Good day and good gaming.